So when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo recently updated the Nintendo Switch to firmware 8.0. What's actually in 8.0? Honestly, there's not too much to get excited for when it comes to uh, version 8.0 of the Nintendo Switch's software. Of course, with all these new softwares coming to the Nintendo Switch, we usually get some profile pictures, which indeed Nintendo did update the profiles with more profile pictures. On top of that, we did get categor categories now, so you can categorize your Switch library if you have a lot of games and then outside of that you can actually zoom in now on the Nintendo Switch's UI which is kind of cool but outside of those features there's not too much to get excited for when it comes to firmware version 8.0 uh, on the Nintendo Switch. I think the main reason Nintendo actually updates the Nintendo Switch with all these firmware updates even though there's not a lot in these firmware updates is the fact that they're trying to prevent people from hacking the Nintendo Switch and homebrewing the Nintendo Switch and things like that. They're trying to prevent anything from the software that may potentially be cracked to be uncracked when it comes to all these new firmwares. That's the reason also they like rolling out these new firmwares. But lo and behold, Nintendo actually did something quite brilliant with firmware 8.0 that I don't think a lot of people realized and a lot of people did not expect Nintendo to actually do this with the Nintendo Switch, which is actually pretty cool. The nice thing about version 8.0 is the fact that they did actually add a boost mode to the Nintendo Switch. Now keep in mind, of course, this boost mode for the Nintendo Switch is not actually for users of the Nintendo Switch. So if you're just playing games on the Nintendo Switch, you cannot utilize boost mode. Boost mode is pretty much only for developers who are developing games for the Nintendo Switch. So if you're a developer and you're developing games for the Nintendo Switch, you can actually use boost mode on the Nintendo Switch. Now what is exactly is boost mode on the Nintendo Switch? Well, boost mode on the Switch version 8.0 specifically uh, uh, pretty much makes the CPU faster. So right now the CPU is pretty much going around 1 gigahertz base megahertz. That's how fast the CPU can actually go. It's only locked in at 1 gigahertz. And we know from the hacking community the Switch can actually handle much more than 1 gigahertz. Hackers have been able to actually overclock the Nintendo Switch to speeds greater than 1 gigahertz. So you can see the potential is there. And Nintendo realizes that as well. So what did Nintendo do? Nintendo pretty much bumped up the uh the speeds of the uh, CPU. Now it's going from 1 gigahertz all the way up to I think 1.75 gigahertz and I think someone said that was a 75% increase in the clock speeds of the CPU of the Nintendo Switch. I think the main reason Nintendo did not do this at launch or did not want to actually do this for a long time is because they wanted to make sure they had a stable product and you do have to realize there was a lot of issues with the Nintendo Switch when it comes to like not necessarily overheating, but things happening where it gets too hot and things like that. So they wanted to make sure the Nintendo Switch was at a stable speed. So that's why they probably played it safe with the 1 gigahertz uh, clock speed. And that's why we've been getting that since launch and they didn't want to take a chance. And also you do have to take in consideration that Nintendo does mass produce the Nintendo Switch. And of course, if they go up higher than 1 gigahertz, they could have ran into problems. So they wanted to do probably do more testing. And overall, like I said, just play it safe when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. But yes, it is very nice at this point. We do have speeds upward of 1, gig, 1 gigahertz. It's going from 1 gig now to 1.7 5 gig. Now, unfortunately, the bad news is not every game takes advantage of this new boost mode. Most games, as of right now, don't even use this new boost mode. I'm assuming games coming out in the near future may take effect of this boost mode, and developers will have more to tinker with and more to play with when it comes to raw processing power and raw power of the Nintendo Switch when it comes to this boost mode, which is good news. However, there are two games currently on the Nintendo Switch that fully utilize boost mode pretty well and it's pretty awesome that we are seeing games take advantage of this new boost mode that Nintendo rolled out. Now the two games that currently use the boost mode on the Nintendo Switch in version 8.0 are Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. Now unfortunately with boost mode on the Nintendo Switch with those two games you're not going to be getting better performance in games so you're not going to be getting better resolutions in games or better frame rates or in general better performance with those two games 
you're not going to be getting better performance anywhere in the games unfortunately the only thing you are going to be getting in those two games specifically is going to be faster loading time since the cpu is going to be much faster basically what happens is i think it stays around a one gigahertz clock speed to play most of the game and then when a loading sequence comes up for those two games it pretty much overclocks the cpu to 1.75 gigs so you can get faster loading loading times uh in these games are these loading times pretty significant i would actually say they are pretty significant because a lot of people out there have already been testing it out and already been comparing it to older versions of these games and they found out that these games are actually loading uh, significantly faster when it comes to boost mode. As a normal user, you probably won't even notice the difference unless you really remember what it was before or you really had comparisons to look at. You may notice the difference, but a normal user probably won't notice the difference. But it is nice, at least Nintendo is updating some of their older games to take effect of this new boost mode or this faster CPU speeds of the Nintendo Switch's Tegra X1 processor. That is very cool. And maybe more games uh, in the near future will actually take effect of this uh, new boost mode. I'm actually curious to see as well if older games will actually get some type of improvements, whether it's loading times, whether it's better performance in like graphics or or uh, frame rate when it comes to these games. That's actually going to be very interesting to see if if uh, people can actually utilize this new boost mode uh, to the Nintendo Switch. So overall, it looks like the Nintendo Switch is getting slightly more powerful. Does that mean every game is going to be playing at a steady 1080p, 60 frames per second? Unfortunately, I don't think every game out there is going to be playing at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Taking in consideration, this is a chip that came out in 2015, and then on top of that, this chip is kind of outdated already, and we're not talking about a desktop class performance chip like a PS4 or an Xbox One. We're actually talking about a mobile chipset, of course the, the power is still going to be very significantly less than a base Xbox One or a PS4, but hey, at least it's nice to know that the Nintendo Switch is getting slightly more powerful uh, with this update and games can actually finally utilize this new uh, boost mode. If developers want to take access to this uh, new boost mode, they can actually uh, get this new boost mode going. Unfortunately, I have a feeling for some reason with the older Nintendo Switch games specifically, I don't know how many devs actually want to go out go out and actually update their games with this uh, new boost mode. I would assume a lot of devs probably just want to leave the games the way they are. They don't want to repatch these games with the boost mode in mind. And I'm assuming games that are already in development are almost close to being done or almost close to being released. I don't think those games will take effect of the boost mode as well because the boost mode just came out and those games are long into the development cycle. I guess what they could do with some of the games that are coming out in the next couple of months or even a year from now, they could uh, update those games with the boost mode mode in mind but I'm very curious to see as a whole how boost mode is going to take effect of the Nintendo Switch and how much more better games are actually going to be on the Nintendo Switch going from that 1 gigahertz clock speed now to 1.75 gigahertz clock speed of the new boost mode in version 8.0 of the Nintendo Switch. Anyway guys this is Wayne from My Tech News signing out.